Hey, what's up guys, Lucas here and welcome to the LP Traditionalizer video. If you're watching this because you just got the pack for yourself, congratulations. This is something super cool that I have been working on for a long while and I think that you're going to be amazed by how easy this tool is to use and how you can transform your paintings from this to this in, in a matter of just a few clicks and a few minutes of working on your software. If you're watching this on YouTube or somewhere where you don't have the brushes yet, then for sure, I'm going to have a link somewhere for you guys to get these brushes, maybe down in the description if you're watching on YouTube or simply by going to lucaspeinador.com, you can get these brushes. Again, it is a fantastic pack of brushes and I am sure that you're going to enjoy them if you get them. So we're going to have this video divided into a couple of steps. We're going to start by showing you what comes with your LP Traditionalizer, all of the files that come in here. The second step is I'm going to show you how to install your new brushes and the whole pack with the textures and everything inside your different softwares. So Procreate, Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint. After we have done that, we are going to go and start applying it or showing you how I apply the LP Traditionalizer on my paintings so that we can go from that to that. And the same thing here in Clip Studio Paint, you can see all the effects that we have in here then otherwise the painting just doesn't have. So a lot of very nice textures that you can apply, brushes, overlays, etc. So let's go and get started. The first thing is we're going to have a look at the files that you have once you download the LP Traditionalizer. So we are going to have all of these zip files. It's very easy to understand. We have here a zip file for Clip Studio Paint, Procreate, Photoshop, and then we have the zip file for the overlays and another one separated for the surfaces. These ones, the ones for Clip Studio and Procreate come just with the brushes. But for the Photoshop people, you're going to find not only the brushes inside, but also you're going to have the patterns. So that is the only difference. Inside these folders, you're going to have all of these guys, all of the overlays as flat images and all of the surfaces also as flat images. These are the ones that you're going to use for installing the patterns inside Clip Studio Paint and Procreate. All right. So very easy to understand. Now let's go and show you how to install these brushes. If you are using Photoshop like I am right here, it is going to be the easiest thing out of all of them. The brushes are installed simply by coming here and importing the brushes. Very easy to do. If you want to install the patterns, it is also just as easy. You're going to go to window and to be able to open these patterns, you just go to window patterns and you're going to have this window right here. You're going to go to this hamburger menu. You're going to import the patterns and you're just simply going to navigate to the ones that you downloaded that is these ones right here and you're going to import them as two different ones, overlays and surfaces. After you have done it, that is it. You have them installed. You should be able to see them right here, 10 overlay patterns and 10 traditional surfaces. So that is it. Very easy to do it in Photoshop. Now let's go to Clip Studio Paint. It is not as easy, but also not very complex. So <clears throat> we're going to go and navigate to the flat images that is here in the overlays, for example. And let's say that we're going to just install this in past. We have to install them one by one, at least as far as I know, you can. You have to install them one by one. You're going to grab one of these guys. You're just going to drop it in Clip Studio Paint and it's going to open it in a new canvas. Now, let's imagine that you don't have this thing open. To open it, it's very easy. You're just going to go to Window and down here all the way to Materials. You're going to open the one that says Materials, All Materials. And it's going to give you all of these things. What we have to do now is install each one of these overlays and the surfaces as a new material. Super easy to do. You're going to go down here in the middle right there. I hope that you guys can see it. There is a little folder icon. You tap on there and it's going to create a new folder. You're going to name this however you want to name it. I'm going to name it with the name of the pack, which is LP Traditionalizer. And let's call that this first one is the overlays, for example. You're going to create a couple of folders, one for the overlays and another one for the surfaces. After you have created that little folder, you are going to selecting this canvas that has the image of the overlay, you're going to install this or make this a material. To do that, you go all the way up here to edit. You go down to register material and you're going to register this as an image material. After that, super easy. You go down here, click, use this for paper texture and tiling. That is very important. Once you have that, press OK. Oh, and of course, you have to choose the location 
you're gonna choose the little folder that you just created and now okay there you go now it is installed you definitely want to install these guys as materials because you are going to have some functionalities that otherwise you will not have so for example if I go back to this lay and decker I'm gonna just show you very fast that you can just grab this and drop it inside your canvas you're going to have some controls for example, for the scale of the pattern, and you can see the pattern is perfectly tileable. That means that you're not going to have any problems scaling it up and down. You can use whatever size of canvas you want, and you can even rotate it if you want, or you can also extend your canvas if you want. For example, here I can come in here and decide to extend the canvas, and once I click enter, you're gonna see that the pattern extends together with the canvas. So that is fantastic. After that, you just come in here, and tap on overlay and you're gonna have that image applied to your whole canvas. And for installing the brushes in Clip Studio Paint is also super easy. All you have to do is navigate to the folder where you have the brushes for Clip Studio Paint and what I want you to do is simply grab this first one and drag and drop it inside your subtool palette, the one that contains all of your brushes. And after that, you're gonna grab this one and you're gonna drag it and create a new folder by putting it in here next to the other categories. Now that will give you a new category or a new set of brushes that is gonna be empty. It's just gonna have that first one that you just dropped in there. And now you're gonna grab all of the rest and you're gonna drop them together with that one. And simple like that, you're gonna have all of your brushes installed right here in Clip Studio Paint. If you want to change the name of this group right here, you just right click, Subtool Group Settings, and you're gonna name this thing LP Traditionalizer. That's a long name, huh? And you press OK, and there you go. That is how you install the brushes in Clip Studio Paint. All right, so now here we are in my iPad, and let's see how to install it inside Procreate in here. So here we have a folder in my documents, and it has three of my files. It is the LP Traditionalizer Surfaces. This is this first one. Then we have the overlays and then we have the files or the brushes for Procreate. To uncompress them is very easy. I'm just gonna tap on each one and automatically the iPad is going to uncompress each file. I'm gonna tap on the second one and I'm gonna tap on the third one. And you can see that very easily. Now we have here the brushes and then we have the surfaces and then we have the overlays. To install the brushes is very easy. I'm just gonna tap right there on the brushes and it immediately is going to recognize that my software is Procreate and now it doesn't matter which canvas I open. I'm gonna go to the brushes and you can see that here, you see, this is the LP Traditionalizer that I had already installed and here is the new one that I just installed. So I'm just gonna delete this one because I already had it installed. Now for the surfaces and the overlays, unfortunately, overlay doesn't have the same functionality of patterns that Clip Studio Paint or Photoshop have. So it is going to be a tiny bit more complex, but it is what it is. We are going to go inside each folder and for example, let's say that we want to apply an overlay and you decide where do you want to keep them. I have these guys on my documents, but you can also save these guys on your photos. But every time that I want to apply it, I have to come in here, grab each one of these ones, go inside Procreate right here and drop them inside my canvas. Now that we have it here, we have to duplicate it or position it manually. You can grab it and simply put it wherever in your canvas you want it to be. And then we have to duplicate this layer manually and then move it and tile it right here by hand. So what we want to do is activate here in the snapping, the snapping and magnetics and grab this guy and move it all the way until it snaps right next to the other texture. And then we can fuse these two guys, duplicate them again and then do the same thing, but this time vertically, all the way until it snaps right at the end and then fuse these two guys. After that, you can change the layer mode, like these ones should be in overlay mode and then you're done. And as you can see, it is a little bit more time consuming than in the other two softwares, but not very hard to do. So now that we have our LP traditionalizer brushes and textures installed on Procreate Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop, it is time for us to go to the fun part and that is finally how to use them. Now, we're gonna be using this little grandma artwork that I did as a study of JC Leyendecker as a demo or a surface for us to apply these textures. I am gonna include this guy in your downloads so that if you don't have anything to work with, you can use this to follow along with my process and be able to 
traditionalize this painting, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I want to tell you is that most of the things that you're gonna do with this traditionalizer pack are gonna be at the end of your painting. So once you go through the whole process, you finish your painting, this painting is exactly how you want it to be and you're just missing that texture, that is when you're gonna use these textures, overlays and brushes to apply this traditional texture. But there is an exception to that and that is the surfaces. There is a little trick that you can do to use this actually at the start of your workflow. So let's say that we have, I don't know, for example, an empty canvas right here. We're just gonna create a new layer, put it up here. You're starting your painting. Something very neat that you can do is play with the surfaces together with the overlays to create a very nice unique effect. So I'm gonna just grab, for example, this I don't know, this canvas, uh, LP surface canvas. I'm just gonna drop it in here and that is going to give me the illusion of just a flat canvas right here. Of course, it doesn't do anything. And if I paint right here, I create a new layer above the canvas and I start painting, let's say with this color right here, it's not gonna do anything. But what we can do is this. Each of the surfaces is a twin of each of the overlays. That means that if here we have the LP surface canvas, all the way up here, we have the LP overlay canvas. And what we can do is we can drop the overlay on top of this, just like that. We're gonna unclip the layer and we're gonna put it in overlay mode. And just like that, we have paired, perfectly paired a surface that looks like canvas together with an effect that makes our painting look like canvas. And I hope that you're really excited because that is, you know, I was really excited once I put this thing together so that we can create something that is unique. Otherwise, there is no way of getting something like this going on on either Clip Studio Paint, Photoshop or Procreate. It is a very unique effect. It gives us the illusion of the surface together with the illusion of the volume of whatever um, couple of surfaces together with the overlay you're playing with. So that is the exception for when you want to use the help traditionalizer at the start of the process instead of at the end. Now let's talk about the normal use for your LP traditionalizer and that is at the end of your painting. Here I have my finished painting and I am ready to texturize it. The first thing that I would like for you guys to do is to simply create a new layer above everything and you can group it and call this whole thing your post-production. I, for example, in this case, can call it the traditionalizer. And in here, in this folder, we're gonna start putting layers that are gonna add to the effect of our traditionalizing. The first thing that I want to do is add one of the overlays. That is what I have found is the best case. We're gonna just drag and drop or simply click on one of these guys and I'm gonna put it in overlay mode. This texture is looking nice, but since it is so easy, I can just click on the other layers or on the other patterns until I find one that I like. I like this one right here, the LP overlay oil. So I'm just gonna go with that one. If you would prefer, you can also tap in here and change the scale, make this texture smaller or bigger, more visible. And you can also, of course, rotate it. If you would want to, for example, really accentuate the strength of this surface, you can duplicate the layer and you're just gonna, you know, make the effect doubly as strong. And then you can, of course, you know, lower the opacity of this layer until you find something that suits you. In my case, for example, I think that having one layer in 100% and another one in 19% might be good enough for this case. After you have these two layers, something nice that you can do is include one of the traditional surfaces, but as a multiply layer that is going to add some warmth to your painting. So I'm just going to create a new layer and, for example, try with this craft or maybe maybe the canvas one and put this guy in multiply mode and look how much better, how much more organic already it's looking by adding these patterns. I'm going to just lower the opacity of this one because I don't want the effect to be so strong. That is enough of the patterns for me. So I'm just going to close this window right here and I'm going to start working this time with the brushes of the LP traditionalizer. I'm going to go in here and start playing with them. I usually like to work with them just in the order that they come. So from the first one being the noise all the way making my way down here to ending up with the varnish. So I'm going to start with the noise and the noise is great for you to lower the contrast of your painting. And I'm going to just hide these layers in here so you can see the effect of it. I'm going to select white for this and I'm going to go over the whole thing 
with the noise. Now the effect of the noise is very subtle. You can go again with the brush over your painting to add more and more. And if I zoom in, hopefully you can see that this is the effect that the noise adds. And this is something that you're gonna find in most photos or simply regular paintings that the color is not going to be as contrasty as what you get with digital media. In traditional, you're going to have things that have a bit less contrast. So after putting this, you can lower the opacity and you're going to have a small effect. The key to this brush pack is to layer the effects one on top of the other so that they are, they feel unique and not very artificial. I'm gonna hide the noise and I'm gonna show you now how these paper textures work. I'm gonna create a new layer and you're gonna see that you have two different brushes, the paper M and the paper S. The paper M is meant to be used in multiply mode. So I'm just gonna use a warm color, something maybe like this. And I'm gonna put this in multiply mode. The beautiful thing of using these guys as brushes is that you can make the texture irregular. That means you don't have to go with the same strength all over your painting, but you can just touch here a bit stronger, touch there, and put the texture exactly with where it fits and it looks good in your painting. Something like this maybe. After that, you can lower the opacity or duplicate the layer if you want it stronger or softer. I'm gonna put it in around 50% and I'm gonna create a new layer and this time we're gonna play with this second texture that complements the paper M. This paper S, you're gonna want to put it in screen mode and you're gonna select some white color like this, maybe with a little bit of color like that. And you're gonna sp start putting it, again, with very little opacity, just carefully trying to not make the effect really overwhelming, well, all over your painting or wherever you want the effect. And I hope that you guys can see that just these two layers alone really help to make your painting feel much, much more traditional. So there you go couple of effects and if we start praying this, I'm just gonna show the other layers so you can see how the effect really comes together with all the layers. You can see how very easily you can start creating an effect that otherwise would be impossible to achieve in digital. So I'm just gonna hide these layers again and let's just see what else we got. Let's go down to next one to these LP traditional strokes. I'm gonna create a new layer and this one I'm gonna fill up with black because I want to show you exactly what the effect is. Above this black layer, I'm gonna select white color and with the strokes, I'm gonna start making these markings and you see the type of texture that this effect creates or that this brush creates. You can vary the size of the brush to vary the effect or you can make it very big and it's gonna leave you this very nice grainy texture that very quickly can help your paintings become something that looks more like watercolor. So if I'm hiding all of these layers in a white one, just on top of the painting without all the other effects, I can put a bit of this effect here and there and start creating this color noise variation around my whole painting that again, really, really helps with that, the feeling of natural media. I can lower the opacity and you're gonna see how much it helps right there. Let's go and see this traditional impasto. This one right here, traditional impasto, is one that I usually put in a darker color and put it somewhere away from my focal point. So it's a very noisy, very dirty texture, so it helps to put it in these places away from your focal point. So something like this around my painting and even maybe in parts like this where I want to make my painting feel a bit dirty, a bit old, something like this. You can see before and after the effect that this impasto brings. Then we have a family of uh, three brushes, the Breaks, Cracks and Crackleur. Crackleur, that one is hard to say. These guys are going to add cracks and breaks in your painting. These guys go perfectly nice if you use them with a dark color on white canvas. So for example, here I'm putting a little bit of the breaks, but if I would want to put it on, on her face, I can use a white color and get a very nice effect right on her face. You can use the same thing for the cracks. Again, white color or a light color for inside your subject and then a dark color for outside your subject. And you can see very quickly, if you layer one with the other one, you're gonna start getting a very natural effect. And finally, the crackle you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna use it to 
create this other third effect. And again, I told you that the key for this LP traditionalizer to work as it should is for you to layer the effects one with the other one and not put everything everywhere because otherwise it's gonna feel way too much and it's gonna look too exaggerated and very man-made. So instead of that, try to be subtle, try to layer the effects and you're gonna come up with something that feels much more natural than simply just slapping a paper texture on top of this. Now I think that these cracks are a bit too much so I'm just gonna lower the opacity of all of this noise that I created in here and I'm gonna create a new layer for our next brush and that is the LP Traditional Distress. This one is actually one of my favorites and you can use it to create kind of like white spots around your painting. Like it had some scoffing and some damage. I definitely like it to add just here and there some high contrast points. It's similar to the paper in screen mode, but it is a bit of a harsher texture, so I like to apply it just at the end. Here and there, being subtle. And if I start layering everything that I created all the way up until now, you're gonna see how everything layers together to create a very, very textury, very traditional effect. And if I come in here and add these magic beautiful overlays, now you're talking. Now this thing looks really, really textured. Now that everything is together, it looks a little bit overboard. And I think that if this wouldn't be a demo, then I would put everything just a bit more subtle. But since it is for you guys, and the point is to show you what the LP traditionalizer is capable of, then let's leave it as it is. And with everything else done, this gives me the opportunity of showing you the last brush and the one that I usually leave for the end of my painting. And that is the traditional varnish. This one is quite nice. It is not for every painting, but I find that it helps to sell the, the traditional effect a lot if you use it correctly. This is meant to be a glare that you get when you, for example, paint something in a canvas and then you try to take a photo of it. Because of the varnish, the surface becomes reflective and usually if you don't put the source of light correctly, you're going to have a reflection of that light in your canvas. So that is what this LP traditional varnish is. Now, something that usually happens is that you have the highlight right in the center of your painting, something like this, but of course, you're not gonna want to cover your whole painting with this glare. So what you can do is throw this to a corner where it hopefully will not bother nearly as much. So you can put it somewhere in here. You can make the effect subtle, for example, creating a whole gradient on this side, or you can make it more obvious by putting something like, but of course you're not gonna want to just cover your beautiful painting. So you're gonna put it hopefully somewhere around the edges of your painting, something like this. You can change the color to something a bit lighter and you can also put this guy on screen mode if you want to make sure that it really acts like it should. This one right here, I personally think that works better in paintings that have a dark background instead of this one that has a white one, but give it a try and I'm sure that you're gonna find where it goes nicely. And that concludes the introduction to the LP Traditionalizer. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you don't have the pack, you can get it in the link in the description, any of my links, or simply by going to lucaspinador.com. If you got the pack, then I hope that you are more excited than ever to start making some awesome looking illustrations, paintings, graphics, whatever you want to slap these textures on. If you haven't seen them, the brushes that I used to create the base painting of this one before I slapped the textures, the LP painting brushes are also new in my store and you can get them also in the link in my description. And I definitely recommend that you get them if you got the LP traditionalizer, they perfectly pair each other to create beautiful paintings. So with that said, thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.